Thanks, Lucy, and uh, thanks to uh, Iowa RFA for having me here today. Did everybody have a good lunch? Are you nice and full and maybe a little groggy? All right, well, let's try to liven it up a little bit so that I don't want you to fall asleep. Uh, so as Lucy said, we're gonna talking biofuels, the do's and don'ts. It makes me a little nervous to get in front of a Iowa RFA group and say, I'm gonna tell you how to talk about biofuels. You all know biofuels better than anyone. But what I'm specifically gonna talk about is how do we talk to others about biofuels? Um, you know, for many years now, the uh, oil industry and other critics have been spending millions of dollars to define ethanol, to define the ethanol industry, to really shape the narrative of how people view ethanol and how people think about ethanol. The keynote speaker earlier today, Emily Score, talked about changing that narrative, and that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about today. For the last several years, the industry itself really led by Growth Energy and Emily Score, has done a lot of research, consumer research, talking to individuals across the country about how best to talk about an industry that is not very well known and very well understood, and it's pretty technical. So we've done this research, and we talked about how we should start to share this with others so that you can be messengers and be ambassadors and help take back the narrative, as Emily mentioned earlier today. So the rest of my presentation today is really based off of hundreds of conversations with people in Iowa and other parts of the country, really all parts of the country, um, about biofuels. So if I can make this thing work, we're gonna go to the first slide. So I'm gonna take you back to high school math, and today you're gonna have a pop quiz. Hopefully you will do well um, on that. And here is the quiz. We asked people, this was probably about a year and a half ago, how do these energy, how do you feel about these energy for, so, sources? And what it says on the slide is, are you favorable or unfavorable to it, right? So do you like it, do you not like it? Um, and what we ask them about are the ones at the bottom, oil, solar, ethanol, gasoline, wind, biofuels, and hydrogen fuel cells. Does anybody have any idea? So if you, if you, when you're looking at that, the, the, the number one is the one that people like the most. How many people think that oil was the one that people liked the most? Raise your hand if you think number one is oil. Very good. It's not. How many people think number one was ethanol? Raise your hand. Okay, that's good too, because it wasn't. Uh, I'll try one other. How about hydrogen fuel cells? Anybody think that was number one? Does anybody even really know what that is? I don't. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the answers and I think you might be a little bit surprised. You got solar as number one. How many people in this room use solar today? Got a few. It's growing. But most importantly for this conversation, where is ethanol? It's at the bottom. It's at the very bottom, 47% say they like it or they're favorable to it. Another 39% say they don't really like it. And then there's a big chunk in the middle, 14% that don't know. But the most interesting thing about this slide is actually not about solar or ethanol, but look where biofuels is. It's number three. It's right under solar and wind. It's pretty popular. People like it. What does that tell us? What is ethanol? It's a biofuel, right? So if you go to the next slide, what this tells us is, is that Americans need to be better educated about what ethanol is. And the other thing that we found in the research is that when we talk about ethanol as a biofuel, people are open to it, they're listening, they wanna know more and they want it to be true, they want it to work in their car for all the reasons that we're about to talk about. So all that to say is, as you become an ambassador, there are things that you can do and know that there is an audience out there willing to listen. In fact, they're open to it and really want it to be the case. So you have a, you have a receptive audience when you're talking about that. And that's not just in Iowa at a biofuels conference or a renewable fuels conference, but literally this was across the country. So I'll go to the next slide. Let's start with the big picture. What is ethanol? How do we talk about it? 
what we learned in that slide where it showed the favorable, unfavorable, is that we have to connect ethanol to biofuels. Ethanol is a renewable fuel, homegrown biofuel, made from plants such as corn, and is already in 97% of the gasoline we sell today. That is a really key point for people to understand. If you like biofuels, and you think biofuels are good, you like ethanol. Emphasize biofuels' key benefits. Ethanol is, burns cleaner, cooler than oil, while also increasing octane, so it's not only good for your car, but it's good for the environment. And really, one of the message points that frankly works really well with millennials and moms is what, what does ethanol replace? Without ethanol, we're la left with cancer-causing chemicals that are bad for our environment, bad for the air, bad for children to breathe. We're left with higher gas prices and more dependence on foreign oil. Just so you can see them and I catch up on my, with my clicker. So now let's go in a little bit more specifics. That's the big picture, that's what ethanol is. Ethanol is good for the environment. Ethanol is earth-friendly biofuel that cuts carbon emissions by an average of 43%. And this percent will continue to grow and increase as, with ongoing innovations. Ethanol production in its use is estimated to reduce greenhouse gases by 110 million metrics every year of greenhouse gases. The really important point in this is that it's like taking 20 million cars off the road. That's a message point that people like to hear. It's hard to fathom, but it's one that they like to hear and it helps them understand why it's important. And then I hit on this one a little bit earlier as well. It's cleaner air. It replaces biofuels like ethanol, replace toxic fuel additives that have been proven to cause cancer, asthma, smog, and that's something that everyone can breathe easier about. So it's good for the environment. And one of the things that Emily said this morning in her keynote that was so important is you got to know your audience. I'm from Logan, Iowa. My parents uh, grew up a short distance away in Council Bluffs. And I'm not sure that this one is the one that will make them be the most receptive to ethanol. But it is to a lot of people. I now live on the East Coast. I live in Washington, D.C. or just outside of Washington, D.C. I can tell you right now that this message is really important out there. So knowing your audience and, and what works with them is always always really important. So let's go to the next one on a more specific basis. It's good for the car. It's good for your automo, automo, automobile. Any car, 2001 or newer, can use E15. That's nearly nine out of 10 cars on the road today and that number will only continue to grow. <coughs> but remember, our opponents like to talk about how it's gonna hurt your engine. And what we often wanna say is no, 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 ethanol or E15, it's not gonna hurt your engine. But what we can say, truthfully, is not that it's not gonna hurt our engine, because then, then we're reinforcing the negative that they're talking about. What we wanna say is, it's good for your engine. It's a higher octane, it's good for your vehicle. And not to mention, it's good for the environment as well. Another great thing to talk about is uh, E15 is the most tested fuel in the world. That NASCAR mechanics trust it. They use it, everybody knows what NASCAR is, and, it's all about the engine in NASCAR, so if they trust it, surely we, we can trust it too. They've gone a, more than 11 million miles on E15. And as Emily mentioned earlier today, drivers are <coughs> across the country have gone three billion miles in their own cars. It's a trusted fuel, and that's important. I think you all have heard the stat that beside your house, the mo most expensive purchase most people in the country make are, is in your automobile. So you have to know that it's something that you can use and it's not only not gonna hurt my engine, but is, that is good for my engine. So it's not only good for the environment, good for cars, but it's good for the country. And it's good for the country not just here in the Midwest where we grow corn, but it's good in, for the entire country because it saves money at the pump. 10 to 15 cents per gallon is what we usually say. Some cases, it's a little bit better than that. Um, it creates jobs, it supports the economy across the country 
340,000 jobs. Um, you know, some say that if E15, if we can create the market for E15 and grow it, there's another 130 to 140,000 jobs out there that can be um, realized. And it drives energy security, reduces our dependence on foreign oil. Since eth ethanol was introduced into the fuel supply, we've cut our oil imports by more than half. That's something that all Americans should want and feel good about. And again, it's a way to bring a message to the individual that hits them where they, where they are, what they're thinking about, not just what we're thinking about. So there's a tough question out there that many of you have had to answer. I know Monty has a few times. How can the ethanol industry succeed without subsidies? Well, we know the answer. Corn ethanol industry doesn't receive subsidies. Unlike our critics in the oil industry, who still continue to, to realize tax incentives and subsidies throughout their industry, not only that, but ethanol saves the consumer money. It drives, the industry drives more than $42 billion into the, economic, into the economy uh, and contributes $5 billion in federal, state, and local taxes. Now, you don't have to get into all of these specific numbers every day, but the fact of the matter is, is that this is just a diversion tactic by our opponents to try to put us on the defensive, and we have the facts on our side. And not to mention that it sa saves everybody that uses it five to 10 cents at the pump. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about some messaging landmines, things to, to be careful about that our critics like to pull us into the conversation on. First one is attacking big oil. Now it always feels really good to go after big oil because there's a lot to go after. There's all kinds of things to talk about there. But here's what we found in the research. Nobody likes big oil. Everybody believes what we say about big oil, but it doesn't sell them on ethanol. It doesn't sell them on our industry. It doesn't sell them on biofuels. It just makes them dislike the, the oil industry more. That's not our job. Your job is not to make someone dislike the oil industry more. That's been done and will continue to be done for years, years to come. What we have found is when you're responding to an attack from big oil, it's better to refute the attack and then go back to all those message points that we just talked about. It's good for the environment. It's good for the engine. It's good for the American economy. Not to get mired down in the mud with big oil and in their fight. Emphasizing corn or driving the food versus fuel debate. You know, several years back, you'll all remember it, several organizations based out of Washington were really fueling this food versus fuel. If we're using corn for fuel, it must be starving people somewhere in the world. We know that's not true. <clears throat> An interesting thing we found in the research is that people don't believe us. They fundamentally can't wrap their arms around that if we're using it for fuel, it isn't hurting the food supply in some way. But there's a silver lining to that, is that it doesn't change their mind about ethanol. They still think if it's good for the economy and it's good for cars and it's good for the environment, I will use it. So throughout this research, what we found is the fuel, food versus fuel debate doesn't really matter that much. We don't have to answer that question. We should move on to what really matters. Invoking the troops or, or war. Another thing that sometimes we like to do is because we're bringing energy independence back, that means that our soldiers aren't going overseas to fight, which I think we all in this room believe is true. What we found in the research is that people thought that was maybe just a step too far, that we were talking a little bit too much about waving the flag or wrapping ourselves in the flag. What is more important is to stay focused on the energy independence and let, their own, let them draw their own conclusion of what that means. Most people are smart enough to know that if we have energy independence and we're not focused on or relying on oil out of volatile places in the world that maybe our troops won't be going there. You don't have to tell them that. So keep to the positive message. And then citing farm issues among non-rural audiences, this goes back simply to knowing your audience. Here in Iowa, it's a very important issue. And frankly, across the country it is. But there are people that sometimes believe that ethanol was put in place just to help the farmer. Well, we know that's not true. 
It's to help everyone. It's to help moms, millennials, people on the East Coast, people on the West Coast. For God's sakes, they need it more than we do here in the Midwest. So just knowing your audience and not being af afraid of or ashamed of being in the agriculture community. That's not what I'm saying at all. For, there's no way you should be. But focus, focusing on what matters to that audience is really important if you're going to be a true ambassador for the ethanol industry. So as you leave here today and go out to be an ambassador and a messenger for the industry <clears throat> and for what you do on a, a daily basis in your livelihood, there's really just some key points to remem remember. Ethanol is good for the environment. It's clean burning. It's earth friendly. And it helps us all breathe a little bit easier. Ethanol is good for our engines. It's high octane. Works well in 21st century cars, 9 out of 10 cars on the road, and it improves performance. And finally, and it's one that really matters to me, is it's good for the, it's good for the country. It displaces cancer-causing chemicals, toxic alternatives, reduces our dependence on foreign oil, and probably most importantly, saves money at the pump for all of us. So I hope that this gave you a good little update on what people are thinking. Like I said, it's based on a lot of conversations, a lot of polling, a lot of background focus groups of what people want to hear about the industry. And never forget that even in the days where you're feeling sort of like everybody's attacking you, people are open to this and they want to hear the positive message, which is there about ethanol. Thank you very much.